Hello and welcome to Turning Point Tactics, the competitive Kill Team 40k podcast and YouTube channel focused on giving you the strategies and tactics to seize initiative every turning point. I'm your host Ryan and I'm here to give you the tips and tricks to elevate every part of your Kill Team experience. If you enjoy this content and you want more, you can join our Patreon for as little as £3 a month. We'll get access to our Discord, Patreon priority questions, early access to videos including Kill Team Bat Reps, faction guides and much much more. If that's not for you, you can support just by hitting like, subscribe and sharing these videos amongst the community of Kill Team enthusiasts local to you. Finally, if you're looking to buy some new miniatures or paints, you can buy them through Element Games, getting a 15% discount and if you use our affiliate link below, you'll support the show as well. With all that said, let's get into it. Uh, so talking around about the terrain packs that we've got, what were some of the lessons you learned in the first terrain pack uh, and why did you make the changes you did when you made version 2? Yeah, so this is really interesting. So um, we released the first terrain pack and I sort of put out there my philosophy on it. So it had to be from one box of GW terrain that you would get in the in the, the kill team box sets that came out. Um, and there was a whole bunch of like requirements from like mainly tack up driven requirements. So there had to be enough or sufficient vantage points for you to score secure vantage. Um, there had to be somewhere for you to be able to recon dash to uh, the 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 vantage should, should be relatively uh, exposed, et cetera, et cetera. But I ended up making a, making a map pack and um, the sort of the generic feedback was that the, the middle ground was quite exposed and they, they, they thought it favoured shooting teams too much. Um, and so, but it, it had very safe deployment zones. So, so you couldn't get alpha struck, but you, you were slightly more risky in the mid board. Um, and people was generically, the feedback was, we would prefer to have a slightly more risky deployment zone, but safe mid board. Um, and so we made version two, where I did exactly that, right? So uh, I, I brought a lot more of the heavy terrain into the mid board and uh, used mainly visibility blocking to, to deny and some obscurity to deny the um, the light cover from being alpha struck turn one. But there's still teams that could do it, like commandos can do alpha strikes and it's always impossible to stop to be honest um so there's, there's still ways around it but that, that was one of the things that we did um so yeah so we we went with that and and now interestingly we have this sort of like somewhat philosophical uh question which is like do we do we change it again like do we change the fact that uh there's now some really strong melee teams because Previously, like there wasn't that many strong melee teams. I think like Gelipox was was the 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 only one, right? Really, that was out there. Um, Blooded is like a blend of melee and shooting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and it's, it's same with a bunch of others. And now we've got this like we've got Felgors and we've got Chaos Colts and we've got Gelipox, and everyone's now going, oh, maybe we should go back to having sort of like the the version one style where the, the mid board's a bit more more exposed. Um, I think I think personally. I'm pretty happy with the state of the map packs. I think there is there's one thing I was talking to Jason about that I could change is I might make so that one of the mid board objectives only is covered by light cover, so you could shoot it with advantage. Um, but I don't know. I I think I think the, my risk would be is if you change it too much, you remove the elite's ability to play the game because elites need that cover in the mid board, and that's one of the things I learned is like. If it's too far for an elite to get up up safely, they just die in their deployment zone, um, or they they're, they're they're too like stuck too far back to be able to do anything else. So um, maps maps make a huge difference to the way the, the game plays, and I think I think I'm fairly happy with where they are. But that's kind of like the lessons that I've learned is how, how like how much of a deployment zone should be safe, how many models should you be able to keep safe. Um, and what's the payoff to, to to them not being safe? Uh, making sure that scouting steps are relevant and they can actually do something with it, I think is really important. Um, and then making sure all the tack ops work is is kind of where I've been focusing on. But do you have any thoughts on that, Connor, or do you reckon that sort of covered it off? No, you're right. I think there's um there are a lot of plates to spin when you're building these these map packs, and obviously with data slate updates and new teams being introduced, it changes and you get more plates. And my gut feeling is that the maps are in a good place, if I'm, if I'm honest. I, I think, you know, they're not going to be perfect for every single team, but broadly speaking, I think I think they're good. But maybe this is something we should open to the comments section 
tell us tell us what you think if you've played on version one and version two. How do you feel the maps are at the minute? Which is better, yeah, and maybe as well, like because this is this is a somewhat somewhat philosophical like question is like, what what changes first? Do we do we change the maps now, like or to to balance out these new melee teams, or do we wait for GW yeah. to balance yeah. the teams out and then because. I'm worried that we're going to like double tap it, right? And we're going to go, oh, we'll quickly release version three and it's going to be really bad for Chaos Colts and favors shooting teams. And then <laughs> then GW get the nerf bat out and smack Colts in the face and suddenly you, you, you know, you're, you're back into Pathfinder dominance for the next six months um, and then people will have the, the, the reverse reaction. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. It, it, it's a lot to, there's a lot to think about, a lot to balance. I think you're right. Maybe, maybe some people in the comments can, can say below what they think they prefer did you prefer version one? Do you prefer version two? What changes would you make? You know, is there, is there anything that you would add or or take away? Any maps that you would tweak in particular? Um, I think the thing that I would look at is, as I said, maybe making one of the objectives slightly more exposed in the mid board. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty with, happy with, with, with how they play. So, um, yeah, let us know what you think. That brings us to the end of the episode. Hopefully you found something new or useful while listening. And if you did, throwing us a like would be greatly appreciated. If you want to make sure you don't miss any episodes, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the bell so you get notifications as soon as the next one drops. It really is the best way to help a small channel like ours. And if you can't wait and you do want early access, we have a Patreon where you can get exclusive access to all our content ahead of time. As always, we'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. So drop a comment below and we'll get right to you. Thank you so much for listening. I'm your host Ryan, this has been Turning Point Tactics, and we'll see you next week.